What would you do if all of a sudden your wife ran off without telling you, completely abandoning you, taking all of your money to go and find herself? Well, unbelievably, that is exactly what happened to this poor man in this story. This post originally came from r slash true off my chest, but of course, there are a couple of juicy updates. This is r slash best of. Here we go. My 50 year old male wife, 48 year old female, abandoned me two months ago to find herself. Now, this was originally posted on October the 27th, 2023. My wife Mary's family has a history of dementia, developing memory issues in their mid to late 50s. Her mum, grandmother, and several other relatives on her mum's side have developed dementia. Her mum lived with us for four years until earlier this year. Father is dead. Our kids are independent and out of the house. Our oldest is in her last semester of college and the younger enlisted. The last four years were tough on us, our kids, daughter moved for college but moved back for a bit during COVID, and our marriage. Living with someone with dementia is brutal. We had talked a lot the last year about taking the remaining college funds, our regular savings, sell or rent the house, we were ready to downsize anyway, quit our jobs and travel for a year or until the money runs out. We just had to wait for her mum to move into our home. Now, I understand her anxiety about developing dementia and I was burned out. You live through COVID working remote, a wife working remote, a college and high school student taking remote classes and a mother-in-law with dementia and see how you hold up. Space finally opened up and we were able to move her mum into a care facility. I finally thought I had a chance to breathe. When we moved Mary's mum out, Mary's mental health took a huge downward spiral. I went from caring for her mum to caring for her. She felt guilty about putting her mum in her home and had lots of anxiety about developing dementia. Our plan was to start our traveling summer 2024. Two months ago, I get home and she's left a note. My friends call it exhibit A. Basically, she was going on our trip without me. She'd quit her job, took most of the savings and wasn't sure when she'd be back. Maybe a year, maybe sooner. She, in quotes, knew I'd understand. Her location is turned off and my calls go directly to voicemail. I texted the kids a picture of the note. You know what, I respect that. Tell the kids what's going on straight away so they're not left in the dark. Ultimately, this has completely blindsided you and I don't think it's fair for you to just have to deal with this on your own and not tell anyone. So yeah, your kids are adults. You might as well let them know. Guys, this has shocked me, but this is what's happening. We have our own checking accounts for direct deposits of our paychecks, but we transfer most into a joint account to pay the household bills and savings. We both had access to the main savings accounts. We have joint credit cards we use for household expenses. The two cars and mortgage are joints. We both also have our own small savings accounts, our own retirement accounts, equally funded, and our own credit cards for gifts and fun things. I closed all joint cards and accounts. I waited a month to see if she'd come back, hopefully before she spent our savings. After receiving only one text in the first month, I went to a lawyer. She basically said there was very little to do right now other than change the beneficiaries of my retirement accounts and life insurance. Yay, my wife gets nothing else if I die alone while she's having our adventures. It was only a month and there was no way to serve her papers. My lawyer advised me to keep paying the mortgage and the cars. The cost of trying to get a judge to approve the sale of joint assets was more than making payments. I didn't want to ruin my credit by letting one of our cars get repossessed, but I can't sell it because she's on the title. I get random texts and she sporadically posts on Instagram. Of course, she has comments turned off. I want to block her so bad, but my lawyer advised me that it's better to maintain a communication channel that's not through our kids. Her last post was from Hawaii. She put in the comments how great a husband I was for letting her take this trip. What the audacity of her putting that, my word. I'm barely making it, paying two cars, a mortgage, household bills, insurance, hoping there are no emergencies because I have no savings and she's enjoying her trip? F her. I'm so angry at her. I helped take care of her mum for four years and her when she fell apart after her mum moved into a memory care home and she returns the favour by abandoning me? I'll never get to take this trip and I have to put off retirement. My only solace is the kids are also angry at her, but they'll probably forgive her eventually. 
double F her. I'm no fool. She's hooking up with guys. She looks good. She'll have zero problem getting men. I texted her and asked her if she was sleeping around. A week later, she responded that she wasn't. Sure. So, I'm drinking alone on a Friday night, and she's somewhere, probably on a beach, enjoying life. Triple F her. Okay, so there we are. That is the first post. Before we get into my thoughts on what I've just read, which, by the way, was nothing short of unbelievable, a quick edit from OP speaking more about their lawyer. OP says, my lawyer has given me a bunch of advice and options, just more than I could possibly include in this post. Yes, I could definitely push the issue harder and I might need to at some point, but that's very expensive. Finding her, serving her, getting a judge to sign off, that's not cheap. I'm following up soon and I plan on talking about the savings and my finances. Until I paid all the bills and realized how little was left, it didn't hit me that I had to worry about money. First of all, all I can really say is the audacity of this woman is genuinely mind-blowing. You've said in the post how much help you've given not just her, but her family as well for so many years. Yet, no, that instantly just gets thrown back in your face in one seemingly quick, crazy decision to just go and find herself whatever that means. I mean, does finding yourself mean that you abandon all your family without telling them and then just go and meet new guys cheating on your husband? Maybe it does. I just have no idea what would possibly warrant this. Maybe there's something that we're not getting here from OP, but yeah, what a slap in the face for somebody to do this to you. Your wife of all people after all the help you've given her. I mean, you don't even need to give her all that help, but it certainly doesn't help her image. Unbelievable. Anyway, let's get into a few relevant comments and answers from OP. So one person said, thanking you for letting her take this trip is basically her saying, when I get through living the single life, I'll be coming back to the comfort and security of married life. When she returns, I would say, welcome home. Here are your walking papers. For what it's worth, I completely agree with that. OP has replied, she 100% is under the delusion that she's coming back to a marriage. She's had a few conversations with our daughter and she's convinced I'll understand and forgive her. What is there to understand? It's, it's incomprehensible. How can you understand that? Someone else said, tell your daughter to pass along the message that you're filing for divorce for abandonment and see if this gets you some traction. I don't generally like the idea of going through kids, but they need to have your back on this. Maybe even tell her they'll cut her off as well if she keeps doing this to you and the family. Maybe even start posting about how she's living the good life and letting your friends and family know what kind of pickle this has put you in. Everyone probably assumes you're on board if you're not purposefully driving the true narrative. OP replied, she only hears what she wants. I asked her to send me an address to serve her papers. Wow. She only told me that we'll work it out when she comes home. The F we will. My daughter tells her all the pain she's causing, but she just says that she only has five to 10 years left until she gets dementia. It's impossible to know if she'll even develop dementia, but shouldn't she be spending this with her family? Okay, well, that comment there is just the craziest one so far because she thinks that she may well develop dementia in five to 10 years, which by the way, is quite a long time. That apparently allows her to go off gallivanting and abandon her entire family. No logic there. I can't say I'm surprised because obviously she has shown absolutely no logic so far, but nonetheless, even that has surprised me a little bit. And yeah, OP, I completely agree with you. If you do think you're going to end up developing dementia, which by the way, given her family history is a completely logical thought process, that's fine. I have no problem with that. Surely at that point you say, okay, but I want to live my remaining sentient years where I know what I'm doing and I'm 100% working upstairs with my family, not abandoning them and doing something completely random. But of course, this is r slash best of Redditor updates. And two weeks after this on November the 13th, OP posted the following. An update from my original post. I'm feeling much more positive now that the financial situation has become a little more manageable. Basically, I'm running up debt that will get paid off when I sell the house. Even with lawyer fees, I have six to eight more months before I have to worry about money, assuming there are no emergencies. My friend's wife gave me some good advice. Don't go from being a hero to a villain in your kid's eyes. How I talk about and treat my wife will determine my future relationship with my kids. Now, I don't give a dang about my wife, but I don't want to make her a sympathetic figure or drive them away from both of us. Very good point, actually. I followed up with the lawyer. 
Basically, she said we're going to have her pay back the savings she took through a reduction in her share of the assets. Any division of assets will include the savings she took. She'll also have to repay the money I spent maintaining the household while she was gone. There's plenty of equity in her share of the house and her retirement plans to cover that though. She said that our finances are so intertwined after nearly 25 years of marriage. Wow, that is a lot of years. My wife is going to get some share of the assets. Best case is she agrees to the terms of the divorce and it's relatively cheap and quick. Otherwise, it gets complicated and expensive. She gave me a lot of options and how much I can expect to spend. So I decided to just mostly wait. I got a couple of credit cards with promo rates for purchases and transfers that gives me breathing room and I can conserve cash. I'll just pay them off when I sell the house. Now that my financial situation is less stressful, I'm actually enjoying her being gone. I'm free to do whatever I want whenever. I don't have to cook or clean or take care of anyone. To be fair, I forget, OP's really been taking care of someone, either his wife or her mother, for the best part of five years now. The house is quiet for the first time I can remember. I loved my wife, but her mental health weighed down our marriage. On balance, it was worth it until now. The first month or so, I expected her to be there whenever I'd get home. When someone was at the door or if I heard noises, I'd think it was her. I checked the doorbell cam obsessively. I'm not looking forward to her returning. It has to happen, but when she comes back, I'll have to deal with her, the divorce, getting the house ready to sell, dividing all our stuff, finding a new place to live. I'm hoping that she'll stay away until after New Year's, but my daughter said she thinks her mum will be home for Christmas, either to stay or visit. My lawyer will have papers ready to serve her. Hopefully, she'll just agree to the terms and continue her travels. Now, people in the comments had some great advice. Renting or selling the house is not really feasible right now since I'd have to fix some stuff and get it ready. Since I need a place to live, the amount I net each month, rent, mortgage, rent on a new apartment, storage unit, it's just not worth it. My kids rooms are still full of their stuff and I don't want to spend the time and effort to clear them out and put them in storage. Getting a home equity line of credit, an H-E-L-O-C. This was great advice. I didn't realize I didn't need both people to get a loan. If I need more money, I can go this way. In the short term, the promo rates on the credit cards were cheaper and easier though than getting an H-E-L-O-C. Serving my wife divorce papers or getting a divorce in absentia, which pretty much means getting a divorce when someone isn't there. I didn't know this, just had to look it up. This is something I might need to do eventually, but the cost in lawyer fees goes up exponentially in cases like this. I'm comfortable just waiting for now. The last recommendation was to look at the phone bill to see where she's at or possibly going. I did look at her usage and I did notice that she doesn't post on social media until after she leaves a place. Like when she posted about Hawaii, she made a call that day that originated in Los Angeles. She posted about a cruise and I figured out the dates, trying to serve her at the port possibly, but it ended a couple of days before she posted. She tried adding international calling to her line, but I blocked it. So she removed her phone from our account. The crazy thing about this is that she's doing all this stuff, right? And while she's saying, oh, my husband is definitely gonna understand and thanks so much to him for letting me do this and, and find myself, at the age of what, mid 40s, almost 50, uh, strange. Anyway, she's actually ignoring her entire family and just ghosting them at the same time. If you're saying to somebody, oh, thanks so much for letting me do this, but then not even talking to them and actively avoiding them, how does that make any sense? Again, I asked a question there that has no answer because this woman is a lunatic. Right then, finally, let's have a look at a couple of fantastic comments. This user says, oh my gosh, I'm infuriated on your behalf. The audacity of my husband is so great for letting me take this trip. The petty in me hopes she'll be home for Thanksgiving because I want her world to explode. Opie replies though that she's told her family she won't be home for Thanksgiving. Nobody told her my daughter and I are spending Thanksgiving with her family though. She can see the pose of us having a good time without her. Someone else said, please change the locks on the house so she can't just waltz back in while you're out one day. I'm so angry for you. I've been married for 23 years, and if my husband did this to me, God help anyone between me and him. That is actually a very good point. The way you've handled this OP is kind of crazy. Yeah, I put myself in this situation, and I'd be going absolutely berserk. I'd be chasing down this woman 
There is no doubt about it because it just doesn't make any sense what she's doing. I feel like I've said that about 20 times now, but it doesn't. I'd have to go and find her physically in real life and get some answers. Opie said to that question though, she left her keys. I changed the code on the security system, the passphrase and password. I also found a new hiding place for the emergency key that we had in the backyard. And a final comment from this user. So she's just going to blow through all the money and then she assumes that you'll take her back and care for her when dementia hits her? Opie says, seems to be her plan, but it's not mine. Well, good. To put it honestly and bluntly, I hope that dementia does hit her. I mean, that is harsh, but I just kind of do. She's destroying lives here. I hope dementia destroys hers. Uh, is that too harsh to say? I don't care. It is genuinely what I feel. And, you know, we do have some dementia in my family and I know the effects. So I'm not saying that lightly. Uh, and on top of that, I hope that she dies tomorrow. Now that might be a bit harsh. But in all seriousness, I mean, how can she expect to just go about her daily life and then say, oh, yes, now that I have dementia, look after me. I hope that nobody looks after her when she has dementia and she lives the rest of her days utterly confused and dies again. I, I do actually hope she dies. There we go. That is the end of this one. I will say though that <laughs> this isn't over, clearly, but, but right now, today, it is. I had a look there is no more on this story right now. You know what? I'm going to just quickly double check right now live at the time of recording just so I know we're not missing anything. It's a shame, but as, as OP said, she wasn't back for Thanksgiving and we don't have an update yet. Yep, we don't have one at the time of recording, but I'm going to look out for this one, guys. And hopefully after Christmas or whenever OP's wife comes back, we get the final update to this story and, and some vindication and some justice that I know that, that we're all looking for. OP, what can I say? Terrible spot to be in. But there we go, guys. Any advice for OP? Get in the comments down below, just in case they do come across this one. Wow, what a story. I cannot wait to hear what happens next.